I'm Paul Friedrich, I'm a collector, and this is my collection. When I was young, I, I liked to collect, I used to collect matchbooks, I collected baseball cards, airplane cards, all kinds of things like that I, I enjoyed. I just was a collector. And I collected guns, I liked guns. I used to hunt as a boy in the orchard. I always liked uh, cowboy movies and early western things. And uh, I always liked, it was always such a mystique of the west and western expansion. My grandparents came in the 1880s and, and that always was interest to, interest to me how they got here and what they did and how they survived. The fascinating part about firearms is how they uh, contributed to the settling of the West. All the way from uh, the gold rush to the, to the Indian rebellions to take care of the lawlessness especially like the guns that were involved in the, in the gold rush, the, the pistols and things they carried, the firearms, the bowie knives they carried, the, the scales, all the different things that were related to history. And later on, when this, the cattle wars, the fighting for land, taking, uh, taking the, the public land and making it private, you know, and settling that for, it, it's an amazing story. It's a story of the United States, no other, no other country has that kind of history that we do right here. We used to go up to the gold country when the kids were small and go to antique shops and fool around up there for furniture and whatever, you know, caught our eye. I uh, particularly like Western Americana uh, from probably about 1875 to about, oh, 1900. But I always liked to go to gun shows and that. I went to Vegas for about 20 some years. The Vegas gun show in the, in the winter time was always a great show. I like Winchesters, large frame Winchesters, model 1876, and Colt Single Action Army. That's the primary uh, center of my collection. This is one of my favorites and it's one of the first early Colt single actions that they made. Not real early, but fairly early, one of the first 1500 or so. It is a nickel-plated, Nimsky engraved Colt single action. Wonderful work on the engraving. Nimsky was truly a master engraver in New York. This gun had originally had a gold-plated cylinder and a gold-plated extractor rod and checkered ivory grips, which it still retains. It was a classy gun. But anyway, it just goes to show you what, how, how people in those times took pride in their work. The craftsmen were really wonderful people that weren't as slipshod as we are today. The Winchesters that I collect uh, are model 1876, with just a large version of a 73, which people talk about as the gun who won the West. It was called a Centennial model. It came out in 1876. It was mainly to uh, run competition with Sharps and Remington for large Buffalo rifles. The ones that I was uh, really liked were the deluxe guns with uh, checker, checkered pistol grip, checkered forehand, and sometimes with engraving. Every thousand guns, Winchester thought they would produce one with a special accuracy, and they thought that this would sell more. It really was just any other gun off the line, but they would make a, a special gun and they'd put 101,000 on it, figuring that it would sell better. They also made a, a one called engraved as 101,000. In Winchester records, there's only three guns or four guns with that designation as engraved as 101,000. And I happen to have one. Part of the fun of collecting is just the people you meet and the, and the relationships you have. We got about eight guys in our supposedly high-end NBWW club. The NBWW stands for the Mystic Brotherhoods of the Wild and Woolly West. And it's eight men who are old enough to know better. They shoot rifles and pistols and then they shoot the breeze, mostly shoot the breeze.
Well, Paul and I have been friends for about 45 years. I'm a, a, a accumulator at best. I have a few odds and ends, but Paul, he has just such a massive collection of just fabulous stuff. I mean, you know, museums don't have the quality stuff that's here. It takes a lot of work to ferret out and discover and find these things. And Paul is just excellent at that. He has the patience to go in and pursue these documents and pursue these things. The gun room in itself is spectacular, but it's not just a gun collection. To walk around the house here, I mean, everywhere you go, there's cool, neat stuff, whether it's paintings, whether it's uh, beer signs or you know old advertising or you know cigar store indians or just a multitude of different things and of all different levels some of the artistry and some of the paintings in here is just is beyond belief i uh, i like the bar because it came from wells nevada it was a coolacy hotel is what it came out of and a good friend of mine restored it. When we brought it here, it looked like a bunch of kindling wood. I can come into the bar and go back 100 years or more and think of the old boys that used to billy up to the bar and what went on over that bar if I only knew. And that's just like with old guns and knives and whatever. You, if they could talk, it would be wonderful. My collection, I hope, will remind my children that I had a profound love of history and items from the Old West, especially the firearms and the, and the men who built the West. I've been very lucky in my life that I've been able to collect all these different items and enjoy them so much. And I hope my grandchildren, as they pass through life, can enjoy something to find a passion they enjoy and, and the friends they make through life and be satisfied, be happy.